10 News begins with breaking news. And breaking news right now on midday, the three-day manhunt for the alleged Facebook killer. Steve Stevens is over. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Virginia Cha. Stevens was wanted for shooting an innocent elderly man. Take a look. This is live. The scene where that chase ended in Pennsylvania with Stevens taking his own life. ABC's Emily Rao has the update. Steve Stevens, the man at the center of a three day manhunt, shot and killed himself today after Pennsylvania State Police spotted the fugitive and pursued the suspect. Pennsylvania State Police officers received a tip that the vehicle that we were looking for, the white Ford Fusion, was in a McDonald's parking lot uh, near Erie, PA. Those officers responded. The vehicle fled from that area. There was a short pursuit in which the vehicle was stopped. As the officers approached that vehicle, Steve Stevens took his own life. Stevens is suspected of killing 74 year old Robert Godwin Easter Sunday, taking a video of the killing and posting it on Facebook. A national manhunt ensued, during which Stevens' cell phone was tracked to Erie, about 100 miles east of where the murder occurred. Rambling videos posted by Stevens show a man whose life appeared to be unraveling. Stevens saying he was out of options and wanted to kill as many innocent people as possible. Authorities saying they've not found any evidence that he killed anyone else. The goal from 2 o'clock Easter day was to make sure that no one else uh, was a victim of violence by Mr. Stevens. We believe that to be the case. That was the number one goal. Obviously, the other goal was to, was to bring Mr. Stevens uh, in safely, and unfortunately, uh, he chose that not to be the case. Police wanted to bring in Stevens safe and alive, and they say that his death means many unanswered questions for the family of that innocent victim. In Cleveland, Ohio, Emily Rao, ABC News. And breaking right now in the 10 News Live Center, Facebook was criticized for the video of Steve Stevens killing the elderly man, which raised a number of questions and concerns about the live feature. Today at this conference, the F8 developer conference that is still going on right now, Mark Zuckerberg commented on the Cleveland murder, saying they continue to work every day on ways to prevent things like what happened in Cleveland. In the Live Center, I'm Kalina Estrinos. Virginia? Thank you, Kalina. 10news.com has all the developments in this breaking story. Or you can check out our website. We will continue to post information as it's released. And a breaking story, Sky 10 above the scene of a crash right there involving an MTS bus. And as you can see, another vehicle looks like a white pickup truck. This is right at Euclid and Market. You can see there are ambulances right there at the scene and an SUV crashed into the parking lot there. You might want to avoid this area if possible. We do have a crew on the way. We'll bring you the very latest as we get it. Now to more breaking news, this time out of Oklahoma City. The search is on for a man suspected of shooting a deputy. The local sheriff says the deputy was serving an eviction notice this morning before he was shot several times. You see the ambulance who took him to the hospital. The FBI has identified the suspect as Nathan LaForce. They say LaForce escaped in the deputy's car before changing vehicles. Not clear at this point exactly how the deputy is doing, but the sheriff does say he's doing well considering the circumstances. The ex-con who charged with stabbing a sheriff's dog and then holding a man hostage is facing a judge right now. Edward Nett was shot by deputies after stabbing the canine right below the eye and then claiming that he hurt the hostage. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala was in the courtroom as witnesses took the stand. Mimi. Jason, right now, several deputies are up there getting ready to take the witness stand to talk about the stabbing and that shooting. But the first person to take the stand was the man that Edward Nett held hostage. They stay behind the couch quietly while he starts like uh, throwing some furniture in front of the door to, to cover the hole to barricade himself. He, he yells out to the police officers that he has a hostage and that he was going to slit his throat. Ned sat in court quietly as the hostage victim, who will remain anonymous, says he woke up to yelling outside of his apartment and then heard deputies tell Edward Nett to put the knife down more than a dozen times. He'd never seen Nett before. Now, prosecutors say Nett stabbed the deputy canine Banger, then forced his way inside of that victim's apartment. This all happened back in December. Deputies first responded to the Rancho Santa Fe neighborhood after reports of the man armed with a knife screaming in front of an apartment complex. 
Deputies first tried to subdue Net with pepper spray, but when that didn't work, they released Banger. But Net fought back, stabbing the dog right below the eye. And that's when prosecutors say he forced his way into the victim's apartment and held him at knife point. The victim did get to safety, but deputies say Net stepped outside of the apartment and said he slit the man's throat. Although the man was unharmed, that's when a deputy fired gunshots, hitting Net, who is recovering well now. But at the end of this hearing, a judge will decide if there is enough evidence for this case to go to trial. We're live in Vista. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Thank you, Mimi. Happening now, closing arguments are underway in the lawsuit over a boy's death from rat bite fever. 10-year-old Aiden Pankey died in 2013. His family says Petco knowingly sold them a rat that carried the potentially deadly bacteria. Petco's attorneys say there are risks to owning any pet and that they always warn about that. Petco says Aiden's grandmother even signed a waiver before buying the rat for her grandson. Happening now, parole is possible for a man who killed his co-worker at a San Diego Chuck E. Cheese. Mark Radke slashed 16-year-old Jeff Rudiger with a knife and then beat him with a hammer. A deputy district attorney says this case is more important for the entire state. This is a life or death decision for residents of this state. That's how bad this decision can be. And that's what I think the uh, decision makers need to realize. And it's a life or decision for another 16 year old boy that happens across the path of this inmate. So if the board approves an early release, Governor Brown would have to approve it. Radke says he is innocent. We have a breaking news update. Some homeowners say they are frazzled. A license, an unlicensed teenager plowed a truck into two homes near Grant Hill this morning. Now, one of the homeowners woke up to the sound of the crash. She says she went outside, talked to the driver. The 16 year old told her she and her mother had been arguing at their home nearby. The teenager then stormed off, got into mom's truck and drove away. She lost control and crashed. She was driving around the corner going a little too fast. She couldn't negotiate the turn and she ended up in our house. <laughs> yeah, look at this. The truck also took out a huge tree in front of one of the houses. The crash damaged a 50 year old piano as well, pushing it across the room. Nobody was hurt, but you can see the cleanup's going to take a while. Now to a developing story in France. Five days before the presidential election there, two men arrested today on suspicion of planning an imminent attack. An intelligence agency is revealing they had been looking for those two men for more than a week. Police say both men were radicalized in prison. France has been under a state of emergency since the Paris attacks in November 2015. French leaders say the risk is still very high there. A developing story, Vice President Mike Pence is talking to Japanese leaders in Tokyo. They're expected to focus largely on trade, but they've already touched on North Korea. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says that Japan is hopeful for peaceful dialogue with North Korea, but that it's also necessary to pressure North Korea to take things seriously. Pence warned North Korea again today North Korea has remained defiant, promising more missile tests in the future. And new information about the San Diego-based USS Carl Vinson, the aircraft carrier and its strike group, will arrive off the Korean Peninsula at the end of this month. The U.S. Navy generally does not reveal the whereabouts of its warships for security reasons, but photos on the Navy's website shows the Vinson and its escorts in the Indian Ocean last week. Well, signs like the ones you see next to me tell the story. A music program on the chopping block at a Scripps Ranch school. This morning, students joined parents and teachers to fight that. Tennis reporter Mary McKenzie is there live now. Mary, what else is at risk of being cut? Virginia, I want to show you this sign. This one is my favorite from this morning's protest. Without music, life would be flat. Says it all, right? It's band, orchestra, choir programs. All of those are at risk as the San Diego School Board looks to cut $124 million in the budget. So the kids were out here all morning long before school started, and they left behind all of these glorious handmade colorful signs saying they don't want this to happen. It's not just music though, it's also PE, it's technology, it's special education, even some teachers like Nikki Wickenheiser. Kindergartners say some of this morning, were some of this morning's youngest protesters. Mrs. Wick was hugging her students as they clutched the signs that they're just learning to read, many of them unaware that she might not be in the classroom next year. The possible whiplash has been hard on her. I don't like that they do this so often where they lay off a whole bunch of people and then they come back and say, never mind, you're going to be okay. It's like, why didn't they budget it all out in the first place? 
so that they don't have to mess with everyone's lives like this. And the parents are hoping that today's protest gets the word out about town hall meetings to fight for these programs. Many parents told us this morning that they say these programs are the ones that their kids look forward to the most. We are live in Scripps Ranch this morning. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Happening today, your taxes are due. The normal deadline pushed back because of the holiday on Washington, D.C. Even still, some people are pushing it to the last minute, barely finishing their taxes. And if you do need to drop them off in the mail, the Margaret Sellers Post Office and Carmel Mountain Ranch will be open until midnight. All other collections will have to happen at their normal time this evening. You can get more information on 10news.com. Just look for the story on our home page. Some new developments here. NASA honored John Glenn this morning with a special rocket launch. The rocket sent into orbit a ship that will deliver nearly 8,000 pounds of supplies to the International Space Station. That spacecraft is named after Senator Glenn, who you'll remember died late last year. The same kind of rocket that sent him into space 55 years ago also launched this ship. That launch was the first NASA has ever live streamed using cameras to show all 360 degrees around the rocket.